get back to South Africa. So he determined that was the, by far the best thing to do. Uh, if he went back um, and bowing to his father, whatever he wanted him to do, uh, which was continue with the, the reason he had come to America in the first place to uh, learn the best in the world about growing corn. And uh, so that's what he determined to do with uh, uh, the determination that he could talk my mother into then coming back to South Africa. But uh, 1930, when he left, she just waited for six months and uh, filed for divorce. Actually uh, uh, paid for his lawyer too to make sure everything was totally, totally clear. And uh, his exit back to South Africa. Now, now they, uh, interesting that they wrote back and forth uh, several years up into the 30s. Uh, in fact, they, they actually continued writing until she wrote to him that she was getting married again which she actually never did, but um, uh, for several years uh, they were very loving back and forth. Uh, uh, he continually urging her to come to South Africa and she continually uh, you know, told him that uh, she had no future in South Africa because of the, the way his family treated her. So, um, so, um, um, I think uh, her mother-in-law would, would have been totally different from that. And, um, and he actually died um, within the next few years, so um, uh, might, might have been far better, especially after uh, her father-in-law died. But uh, by then she was determined, she wanted her children to be Americans. And uh, so that's uh, the way it was. Although uh, my uh, my younger sister, uh, having never had a, a date in her life, um, got very uh, diligent in going to the library when she was 17 and uh, ended up uh, the librarian who was 25 uh, bouncing from a, a failed relationship and uh, it ended up uh, with a rebound and, and my 17 year old sister married this 25 year old and um, she had already begun a correspondence with my father and especially his new wife. At this point they had um, three little boys and uh, her mother-in-law invited uh, uh, them to come with uh, her payment uh, to South Africa for a visit. So uh, after they were there for I think possibly about six months uh, um, they 
we can be wanting to get, get back to America. My father gave each one of them uh, uh, jobs to do. Uh, um, my sister's husband was supposed to get some cattle ready for market and uh, he gave uh, um, his uh, sister a job cleaning out everything in his office and he uh, told her just uh, throw everything out and uh, um, uh, just get everything clean well as she looked to through all, all these old letters, she found several years letters of my mother, which she decided was very much worth saving. And she, she made copies. Uh, she didn't uh, give them to uh, the others of us uh, right away. I think it was uh, maybe 20 years before she thought she should share those, but she made copies of all of my mother's letters in the 30s and shared them with, with us in probably the, after the Second World War. So, but uh, uh, if you're able to, to see the um, measure of continued love that uh, they at least uh, stated for each other um, being separated you know that uh, time and distance but there there was that uh, 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 continued uh, effort by my father to get my mother to South Africa and her insistence that uh, she had uh, no future in South Africa and especially wanted her children to be Americans. So, so that uh, kind of uh, brings us up to um, the Second World War. Hold on a second before you get to that. You said to me that you were the only, you didn't know any other children your whole childhood or high school, all of your schooling, whoever, she, he never knew another divorced child, another mm. classmate that was divorced. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine how was that was common? so unique. Yes. And they moved around to several different states. And it was never something that he was always kind of the, they were always the odd ones out. Yes. And it was shameful, you know, because yes. it just didn't happen. My grandma. Yeah, uh, the divorce was very, very unusual. Very, yeah. Back then. Mm -hmm. uh, um, in fact, uh, the way I generally would, when, when people asked me where I went to school, I could say I went to school. I had uh, kindergarten in Arkansas, grade school in Kentucky, junior high in Alabama and high school in Tennessee. So wow. We, and no food stamps. <laughs> no Medicaid. You know, right? Right. right. There was right. none of the things that help single moms nowadays. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. And what were you saying about your grandma? She was born in 1917 and her parents okay. were divorced. Oh, wow. So and the similar. So, yes, it was very, it was very different and difficult can you hear melissa her you heard her say that okay i never know what he can catch so, yeah similar uh, one one of the things uh mike mentioned in uh alabama for instance um uh, my uh my mother's lady friends um uh, admired uh the fact that she made her own bread and she was quite a good baker and uh, urged her to 
um, um, sell what she, she was uh, 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 cooking, baking things so so remarkably that uh, she could get these together to sell. Uh, so she decided to do that, and um, I would have been um, at that point, I think, maybe um, 13, and uh, my daughter was 11, and uh, we started out on uh, taking her baked goods on our bicycle basket, and going into Decatur, Alabama, we lived right outside, and uh, selling door to door, which uh, um, was quite a challenge, but we actually um, got a, a good enough business together that uh, for the coming year, and now, uh, at that point, um, my mother was homeschooling us until the truant officer uh, <laughs> found out that here are four kids who are not going to school. And uh, about the last month before summer came, uh, we ended up being um, ushered into um, what would have, would have been a junior high. I think uh, I think I would have been in uh, sixth grade. My sister in seventh, uh, uh, and brother in fifth. So that was nineteen thirty-eight. You're saying you were thirteen. That would be nineteen thirty-eight, right? And so it was still the depression, right? Yeah, it was. Uh, so how much did you sell those baked goods for? Is what I might question is. <laughs> oh, how, how much did we sell things? Yeah. For? Oh, no. bread was probably ten ten cents a loaf, and uh, um, I, I know uh, I'm not sure what we sold. Um, Things like rolls and cakes, and, but, but uh, we we were probably uh, actually uh, a little lower price, and uh, uh, but uh, we we did uh, get uh, uh, a successful enough um, business that uh, we were challenged to go into town and open a combination bakery and, and uh, restaurant. Uh, now it turned out that um, uh, the, the bakery that was the reason for getting in there uh, didn't actually do too well uh, our our restaurant did uh, uh, fairly well, not enough to keep up with the bill, but fairly well. <laughs> oh <laughs> uh, God! Yeah, uh, I, I know. Uh, uh, I I was the main waiter for a while, and uh, I would rush from school. To cover the uh, business uh, at uh, lunchtime, and then rush back to school. I know at one time uh, I got called into the principal's office to um, um, give an answer why I was always a little bit late. I thought that was going to be pretty tough. But when I explained to the principal what I was doing, he seemed to understand, and uh, he 
wasn't wasn't at all critical, you know, you see the understanding. So this was the school I'm sorry to keep interrupting, but fine. but this was the school that you were made to go to because otherwise you'd have been working all day at the rest at the bakery probably, right? Uh, well uh, Or was that that same period of time? Yeah, at least that's that's what uh, what Saturday was like. Uh, yeah. You know, Okay. Well, no, I'm talking about the truant officer who made you go back to school. Was that during that same time? Yeah. Oh, okay. That was, yep. Uh, yeah. So, and that's something. But, uh, <laughs> anyway, we uh, 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 got uh, behind enough behind on the bills that uh, my mother determined. Uh, to uh, abandon everything and um, head back for uh, Arkansas, her home in Arkansas. But uh, when we got to Memphis, um, she was, um, I don't know whether uh, she was actually uh, um, thinking there was a Old bridge across the Mississippi, but uh, she decided to look for a job in the bakery in Memphis. And the fact that she was coming from uh, her bakery experience, she right away found a job. Uh, unfortunately, with, within a couple weeks, the bakery caught fire and burned down. <laughs> and, uh, so uh, that was the end of that job. Uh, uh, I don't know how much time elapsed, but this was uh, coming up to uh, uh, where the war had already started in Europe, uh, Germany going through every country uh, with lightning speed mm -hmm. and uh, the, uh, the British barely evacuating at Dunkirk, uh, thankfully saving most of the uh, English and some of the French and Polish fighters. Um, but uh, my mother uh, began going to uh, drafting class and from this drafting class she then got a job in uh, a plant that uh, was making B-25s. So uh, um, well, this was um, uh, after I determined uh, uh, to get in the um, what was then the Army <laughs> Air Corps this was uh, uh, one of the main disagreements I had with my mother which was uh, uh, um, In every every mother's uh, thinking to have her son get as safe a job as possible. <laughs> um, but there was a uh, at the, at the same time the. Uh, Army Air Corps was uh, uh, looking to sign up everybody who could pass the qualifying exam. Uh, uh, there was another, what they called college training detachment, which had a promise of uh, uh, five, five months and um, 
This was what uh, looked like at least a five month delay before you actually would get into any danger at all. Uh, but uh, I was like most other young men at that time who was, uh, wanted to fly. And uh, now one of the things that uh, because of a film that had been been out uh, uh, where the uh, navigator had uh, goofed up and become lost and the the end of this film showed the airplane flying off into the wild blue yonder with uh, expectation that uh, they're just going to fly until they crash so that uh, uh, nobody wanted to be a navigator. <laughs> um, but uh, when I got to pre-flight, the order came through that everybody who had uh, made the initial uh, test score that uh, was good enough for a navigator uh, everybody had to be a navigator, um, and they made the announcement, you can object if you want to, but, but they didn't, um, listen to any objections, so, uh, that's how I ended up being a navigator, so, uh, actually, um, um, most of my class uh, never did get to pilot training anyway, and uh, at that point they they had plenty of bombardiers, but um, they uh, made it uh, clear that they were losing so many navigators that they had to, everybody had to make an effort to be a navigator. So. Uh, that uh, I ended up um, getting on uh, B-24 crew and uh, went through training at uh, Boise, Idaho. Uh, we um, were already uh, shipped up to the state of Washington to fly to Okinawa. And uh, when we first got there, uh, they put out the word that uh, uh, we've got to immediately go to Okinawa. Nobody gets that final leave to go home before you go overseas. Uh, naturally, everybody was uh, moaning and complaining at that. But uh, thankfully, uh, about halfway through that July, uh, July 45, the word came down uh, the orders have been uh, relaxed and we are going to let everybody go home. So August 1st, everybody gets to go home. And at that point, uh, training was finished and we uh, just uh, spent our time going to the uh, many lakes around to uh, go fishing and uh, coming back from a fishing trip, uh, co-pilot Bombardier and I got uh, a ride from the girl in a 34 Ford. And uh, we began telling her how we were going to get to go home after all. And, and she says, well, how are you going to go? He says, well, we, we don't know. We'll probably hitchhike. And she says, why don't you buy this car? I'm selling this car for $300. That's just $100 a piece. And so that sounded like a pretty good deal. So we bought her car. 
And uh, the only main thing that was wrong with it is that the uh, gas gauge didn't work. And uh, the, the other two guys uh, said, well, uh, well, who's gonna watch the the gas? Uh, Odometer, uh, right? Is that what it's it's not, life to do. I said, well, I do that all the time. That's no big deal. And I said, then, yeah, that's, uh, we got no gas gauge on a V24, but uh, I just keep track of that. So they depended on me, and uh, I uh, failed to figure in all the days that we were driving around giving me the workouts. By the time we started out for good, uh, of course we should have filled up naturally. That would have been the sensible <laughs> thing. But instead we took off and ran out of gas. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> he said, Master, you're supposed to be watching this. <laughs> I didn't know what to say. Just about that time, a, a big gas truck pulled up behind us and said, uh, um, Hey guys, how's it going? <laughs> and he said, ah, We just ran out of gas. And he said, No problem. And he filled us up <laughs> and we took off. Nice. <laughs> without any problem. <laughs> and, uh, you were all in uniform, too. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, we um, had uh, been some concerned about the gas coupons, which uh, were in vogue at the time. But uh, uh, most gas stations uh, didn't even bother asking us uh, on that time. But uh, anyway, while we were home, uh, August 6th, the first mile. Adam Baum uh, destroyed Hiroshima and the second one Nagasaki and the ninth and uh, by the end of the month uh, the war was over so uh, we uh, here we came that close to going for the bombing of Japan actually at that time there was already plans for a, a Japanese invasion, which would have been uh, uh, really costly. They had um, figured to lose a million American men, and definitely more than that uh, Jap Japanese, if they had a full invasion. But thankfully, the uh, Japanese emperor determined to to just go ahead and surrender and end the war. Uh, they d determined that most of the people in Japan would have continued fighting, and they they were actually against the emperor's decision to surrender. But uh, once they surrendered, uh, it. Uh, quickly ended everything. So uh, we had uh, a time that uh, we were looking to uh, get get back and continue everything. And 